All right, let's get started. So hello, everyone. It's really nice to be here today at our first AI meetup in Wrocław, co-organized with Vercel. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about bringing on-device LLMs to React Native with AI SDK. But before we begin, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Szymon Rybczak, and I'm senior React Native at Callstack. On a daily basis, I'm doing some R&D. I'm working very closely to a few AI projects, including React Native AI. And yeah, I'm posting a lot of stuff on Twitter. So if you are there, uh, let's connect. I'm Shimon Ripchak. Here's my hand up there. Um, all right, let's begin. So if we take a look at AI from the infrastructure point, um, the first thing that comes to my mind, we can host AI in the cloud. And I think about the cloud, I think about, you know, gigantic servers, uh, you know, powered by very, very good components, CPUs, GPUs. But also, it turns out that you can execute LMs on device. So we can execute a Llama on our MacBooks. We can run it even on our phones. And actually, this is what happens right now. Siri and all the typing models that, that helps predict the next word that user will type, that's all AI. It's, it's already running on our iPhones. Um, and let's quickly go through the own device to see what are the benefits, actually. Uh, so first of all, it's free. Everyone likes the free stuff. So, you, you know, we don't need to pay for the tokens, for the API. And, and yeah, free is cool. It's a fair price. Um, it's secure. We are not sending any, anywhere the data. Uh, it's only on our device. So we can like, uh, feed it with, with the private data, with health data, with some legal stuff. Uh, we are not sending it anywhere. Um, also, it turns out that it's fast. And I have a few demos, so you, you're going to see it. Um, it's reliable, so it works anywhere, every time. Uh, we don't need to you know, hit the API, so we av avoid all the scenarios when API is down and, and, and it's there. And it works offline, so it works in the cave and works in the airplane mode everywhere um, on the train. So yeah, when I was doing the research about on-device AI, I was, of course, thinking about mobile. This is what I do for a few years. And I was thinking about, is it possible to run them in mobile and in React Native? Uh, that's what we do at Callstack on a daily basis. And I was thinking, if there is a straightforward way to do it, uh, how much effort does it require to do? And do I need to graduate from university and, know, and be like C++ beast to do it? Uh, so, yeah. And another part of our, my research was that the devices that we all carry in our pockets are really powerful. Like here is the performance chart of iPhone 15 Pro um, on the single thread. Uh, it's actually the same or a bit worse, a bit better performance as iPods. Um, so it turns out that, you know, maybe you can leverage somehow the, the performance uh, of the CPUs and GPUs. Um, and yeah, the last bit that motivated me to work on bringing on device to React Native was this tweet from Guillermo Morav, who is the CEO of Vercel. He tweeted about window.ai, who is a, which is a new directive added to the web spec, um, which basically every browser would ship LLM inside. So web developers could access it and ship some features inside web, web websites with AI. And the performance of it was really nice. Um, and actually it was like 300 megabytes. So not that big model. And then I learned also about providers in AI SDK. So AI SDK itself is an API, but the actual implementation for um, any model lives inside the providers. So for example, this is the bare AI SDK, but when we take a look at the, the full code, here we pass the provider. So after passing the open AI from AI SDK open AI, provide official provider, we pass the implementation. And actually the provider spec is public, public and everyone can work with it. So what I thought back, back then, and I was just dreaming up about the API, is to maybe create my own provider, custom provider, and, and call it with AI SDK. And yeah, that, that looks like a cool API that we want to bring to React Native. Um, but I was missing one piece. 
the missing piece was the backend for it. You know, like we have a cool API on the user per, user side, but we need somehow to run the inference of the model and to actually to actually get the answer. Um, so yeah, here is the the thing that I was looking for: MLCLM engine, which is a custom uh, engine for running on device LLM inference. And it's also universal, so it somehow relates to React. So, you know, we can run any LLM on any platform, same as React. Um, and the performance of it was really nice in, in the benchmark. So I knew that this is the moment when, you know, I have all the bits and I need to collect them and to ship something. So I started cooking, you know, I spent a few longer evenings and and yeah, um, after some crashes, you know, making some walkarounds and trying to get the first demo, um, and some some help from Callstack Falls, uh, I made the first demo. And this one is the, the video from the first release that we shipped. And actually, only the first part of the video is sped up because in this demo we are using the custom third party model, so we need to download it from the internet. Uh, and now this is the real speed. Uh, so I turn on the airplane mode and yeah, let's see the performance. Uh, let's ask what's React Native. Um, and yeah, it take takes a second and stream comes in. And yeah, React Native is an open source mobile application framework. Cool. Uh, it's running on the device custom model. Um, but yeah, it has some... Uh, some cons, you know, like we need to download a huge model from the internet. It's also running the latest device. Uh, it also uses like four gigabytes of RAM. So by the way, this is the maximum amount of the RAM that any app can use. Um, and and yeah, this was the state of the art last April, this year April, sorry. Um, but always when we are thinking about on-device mobile AI, we were like wondering about what's next. So we've shipped third party LMs, and that's what also Executorge and React Native Executorge did, uh, the cool library from Software Mansion. But we were thinking about the next step, like what we can do. And we were thinking about built in LMs. So think about it like when iOS or Android would ship LM inside. So basically the same idea as Chrome. And, and yeah, you, everyone would have it. So app developers could implement the features based on that. And, you know, we don't, we wouldn't need to wait for the model to download. Um, so yeah, we are waiting for this moment. And then WWDC 2025 worldwide developer conference, um, June. Um, and yeah, they've announced the thing. It's called foundation models framework and the, the performance demos and, and everything was really exciting. And I was really shocked with the API on the Swift side. Um, so we know that we need to we need to bring it to to React Native. Um, as usual, uh, we are watching the the conference from Apple together with some call stack folks, and we are making some jokes about liquid glass, about Flutter, some going viral. Uh, so so yeah. But seriously, I've tweeted about the foundation model framework, and. In React Native, there's always this kind of funny race that, you know, who will first integrate something to React Native. So I tweeted that when watching the conference. And then I spent a longer evening and with some help from other iOS experts from, from Callstack, we've made it work. So here is the first ever running demo of Apple LM in React Native. Uh, day after uh, Apple announced the, that they are shipping LLMs. So here, generate text function from ASDK, get model, and yeah, on the right, my my phone, I turn on the replay mode, no internet connection, and let's see. This one doesn't have streaming, but it also is, the answers are also coming really fast. Um, yeah, who are you? Yeah, I'm virtual assistant created by Apple. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, the answers are coming really fast and it, it doesn't have even streaming. Uh, so, so yeah, um, it knows that, that meta is like, like Facebook is now meta and few other things. The model is surprisingly, surprisingly working really well. Uh, so, so yeah, and this is the API that is powering it. Um, like five lines of the code, uh, with ASDK, uh, React Native AI package and yeah, working right now. Um, 
so of course I've tweeted about it uh, and some folks from the community, you know, you can just ship things, you can just use on-device models. Um, on-device models were Apple working with AISDK. And for us, most import- the most important fact was that we've shipped that in less than 24 hours, the first proof of concept. So it, so it clearly shows what you can build with like React Native and the abstractions of, uh, of it. Um, so, so the proof of concept was there. Um, now we are starting, started to wonder about other things. Uh, so the, the first question that few other, few people asked me was that what models runs under the hood? And actually, like nobody knows. That's the, that's the thing. But uh, there are some leaks that it's a free billion model and, and it, it's based on some Quen model and some other facts. It's of course not official information. But the, the thing that I am wondering about, like, we shouldn't care. Like, the model is working really well. Like, it's coming with the OS. Uh, Apple will for sure, uh, improve it. And the, and the API is stable for now. So, so yeah, for app developers, it's a clear, nice choice to, to integrate with because it's for sure gonna be better and for sure gonna be widely implemented for other, other iPhone devices. Um, so yeah, let's play with demo. Uh, these were pre-coded. So let's see how it works in, uh, on the real device. Uh, fingers crossed, of course. Uh, yeah. All right. QuickTime works. So, so that's cool. Um, yeah, let me bump the font size, I guess, a bit. Uh, and yeah, this one is release mode. I want to play with bundlers and, you know, connecting to the bundler in like new place uh so this one is running in the release mode and yeah uh on device model we work with by, by coding the ui for this app in the office today uh but but yeah uh it works like if anyone has any question what we can ask uh like do you know something about bottom tabs in react native because i will show you something these bottom tabs that are here are liquid glass bottom tabs from iOS 26 and they're using our library and they're looking really well. Like the first liquid glass was not looking that well, but this one is looking really sick. And yeah, it knows about some of these, like React Navigation, React Native, Native Tab Navigator, yeah, some of these, but it's, it, it doesn't know, of course, about React Native Bottom Tabs. These are a new, new thing. Um, but yeah, this one has a streaming demo. Um, and it works well. Uh, we have support for structured outputs. So whenever you want to create some, I don't know, like any type of data. So for example, this one, uh, I can show you the code. Uh, this one is creating the, the simple person. So it's an object of the person. And we are using here result schema, which is typed. And then the types are converted to the Swift types. And, and yeah, this is how it works uh, in a real time. So, so yeah, this is what AI generated with the schema that we've here uh, past, uh, this one, for example, random list, list of fruits, um, uh, here, the array type. And yeah, we have apple, banana, cherry. Um, it will all works well. And the most important fact, sorry, I didn't mention, like this one works in, in the airplane mode. There's Wi-Fi icon, but it's coming from the QuickTime player. I don't know why. Also, it's like 931. It's not. So, so yeah, QuickTime is just passing the, uh, the, the wrong header here. Um, so yeah, and the new cool APIs that we've brought to React Native as part of AI SDK feature parity support um, are TTS and STT, so speech to text and text to speech. And let me try. So, so this one is a demo of speech to text. Let's see if it works. I was testing that in Uber. It worked. So let's see if now works. Yeah, this one is a demo of speech text. Let's see. And it's all running on the device. I don't need internet. Like, it's not that good as Whisper as of our testing, but it's also like, it's coming with the OS. We don't need to download anything. So, so yeah, pretty cool. Uh, and it's for sure going to be better in future iOS releases. Um, and yeah, last but not least, uh, here, uh, text to speech. I've downloaded previously the, some, some cool voices. You can also use the personal voice. So you can record yourself if you like and listen to yourself. But yeah, let's see. Generate speech. And let's, does it, does this mic work? Uh, oh, 
Okay, let me unplug it. Hello from Apple on device speech. Yeah, this is a, a speech generated by the um, by the by the LLM that was that was here to, for the um, for the text to speech, and you can like use any other voice, some better one, some so, some that you like, whatever you whatever you want. Yeah, so it didn't crash. Yeah, cool. Um, when so Mike, I think you are happy that it didn't crash. And, and yeah, let's go for the stuff that we have here. Uh, in the, the, the package that we already released, we are updating it really frequently right now because there's a lot of stuff to bring. Uh, React Native AI slash Apple. Um, so to, to sum up, structured outputs, streaming support, um, tool calling. Also, I didn't mention demo, but you can uh, pass the tool calls. And what is really cool is that you can, you know, call any native module. So you can have like create calendar event uh, type of tool, and then it will create the, an event inside the, the calendar or like battery lever or whatever you like. Um, another one, embeddings. So you can feed AI with the, the model with some data about your health, uh, about some document, whatever, whatever you like. Transcribe and speech. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty packed release. Um, and yeah, let's see what is on our ro roadmap. So we wanted to ship all Apple on device features for iOS 26 launch. And we mark it, we mark it as done. Uh, iOS 26 is marked as stable next week and React Native is prepared for it. Um, then we want to ship Android features. So Android is also working on on-device models, uh, Gemini Nano, Gemini Edge, uh, Google is cooking too, basically. And we want to, to with both Tool and the MLC LLM engine, we want to have ASDK feature parity. This is what we aim for. And yeah, here is a kudos slide for Vercel for working on ASDK. Uh, it was one of the best choice when working on React Native AI. And, and yeah, we are happy to to consume the API and, and yeah, it's really really cool abstraction and and yeah, the speakers from like the creators of AI SDK are gonna speak tonight. Um, and yeah, actually, React Native AI got added to the to the docs today uh, as a custom uh, community provider. Uh, so if you uh, if you are looking through through the like AI SDK docs, you can find React Native Apple provider with some guide how to integrate. Uh, React Native uh, AI with with the with Versal SDK, and and yeah, if you like the idea, if you like the project, if you have any ideas what we could ship, uh, yeah, go scan the QR code, start your repo. Uh, we are going to 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 hit maybe one day one K stars, and and yeah, last but not least, I, I want to give huge kudos to a few folks. Uh, Mike Rabowski, who already spoke to today, uh, he's CEO of Coldstack. He helped me with like the proper release, proper development, and also ship like the majority of the React Native AI Apple stuff. And also Kevin, I don't know if he's here, uh, but he worked on Android implementation for MLC and also helped me initially with the idea of on-device uh, LLMs and on-device mobile AI. And Jamon from Infinite Red. Uh, who sponsored the React Native AI package, uh, which sounds really cool. And yeah, that will be it. Thank you so much.